Hello and welcome to this latest installment of Retro Computing with the Commodore 128D. The topic today is the Digifix and what on earth is that you will ask and I was in exactly the same position. When I bought my 128D in its CR coast reduced version. This is the Commodore 128D CR that I had recently purchased and as always I opened it up to check that everything is okay on the inside. Luckily the CR is very easy to open, it only has three screws in the back and one screw on each side at the bottom. After that you can just slide back the metal cover and have immediate access to the electronics inside. Looking at the mainboard I couldn't fail to notice that there were two wires that went from one chip to the other side of the mainboard where they were connected to a resistor. Now I did not know what kind of chip this was so I had to look it up and found out that this was indeed the sound chip. I then found on the German Commodore 64 wiki pages that this was the so-called Digifix which attempted to solve some problems with volume balance. Why do we need the Digifix? The original 6581 sound chip had one shortcoming, it was the noisiness of its volume envelopes. This was misused by programmers to achieve playback of digital audio. The volume envelopes on the 8580 are much quieter and therefore also digital audio is much quieter. So if you're playing old games or old demos, they will play back with much much quieter digital audio on the 8580. Before we proceed with the fixing, let's have a quick demo of what these two different chips actually sound like and for that Turbo Outrun is very good because it has both normal sound chip music and digital sounds. This current Digifix, which was done 20 or 30 years ago, will need to be redone because it was done without soldering. The wires were just twisted around the legs of the chip and everything was fixed in place with office tape. Now after 20-30 years obviously the tape gave up, the wire came undone and so no contact is being made and since it's a bit dangerous I will just redo this but I will keep the original design because I very much like the idea of not having to directly solder anything to the mainboard. Before we start I will move the power supply out of the way a little. We don't need to remove it completely, I just take off two screws on the side, one in the middle and two in the back and that is enough to shift the power supply to the side a little and that gives us enough room to work with the sound chip. Now was the time to remove the wires. I first tried cutting them directly but it turned out to be a mess since the wires were falling apart so I decided to remove the whole chip. Luckily the chip is socketed, it's not soldered so you can just uh, carefully remove it either with an appropriate tool or with a very flat screwdriver from both sides, be careful not to bend the pins while you do that. At the same time I checked out the color codes of the resistor. This was 800 kilo ohms, so it's more or less in line with what I saw on different forums and also on the wiki, but I decided to implement a slightly improved version with a potentiometer so it would be easier to fine-tune without having to exchange resistors. So once all parts had been removed I fixed two wires to the chip just in the same way as it had been and at the same time I also cleaned the chip from the glue that had been sticking to it for 30 years. After soldering the wires to the chip very carefully I also added some shrinking tube to prevent 
the wires from making contact with anything else. Then I soldered together a resistor of 220 kilo ohm together with a potentiometer of 1 mega ohm. Together that gives us quite a good range, so the minimum will be 220 kilo ohm and the maximum 1.22 mega ohm. That's a very good range and it will allow us later to adjust the volumes just like we want it. After soldering was completed, I added some shrinking tube for a good measure and when all that was done, I basically had the whole assembly on my table with a chip on one side and the potentiometer with the resistor on the other, ready to be put back onto the mainboard. Here the chip is ready to be pressed down, I put it in the correct position, also the right way around, and then very very carefully let's push it down so that all the pins make contact. And that's it. Now the chip is in place. On the other side I have the potentiometer, I put that on a piece of plastic to prevent it from making contact with anything metal, and now we can start trying it out. Now that everything is working, we can put the wires where they belong. I fixed them with electric tape and uh, I put the potentiometer exactly where the resistor was before on top of the expansion port. There is some plastic underneath to avoid that it makes contact. And uh, if you want, obviously, you can put the potentiometer in a way that it's reachable from the outside. You could even add a switch to disable the digifix. I didn't want to damage the computer shell and so I put it all on the inside. If ever needed I can open it up and uh, do some more fine tuning. Outrun. 